Hello, John Richter here from Financial Mechanics, and welcome to this episode on tax loss carry forwards. As many of you may know, one of the things that occurs is that you can have negative taxable income. And unless you do something other than just taking that income and multiplying it by the tax rate, uh, what effectively will happen is you will be implying that the government is going to send you money back. And as I've indicated here, that circumstance is highly unlikely. So we need to do something else, and that's the purpose of uh, this episode. So we start with that basic question, you know, what does happen uh, when taxable income is negative? And the so-called tax losses, which is any period of time in which we have negative taxable income, so we're generating tax losses in the current period, uh, as I've noted, rarely create a cash back scenario. Um, what does tend to happen is that the tax man allows us to carry those forward, accumulate them in a balance, and hopefully use them at a future date, uh, applying against circumstances and periods where we have positive taxable income. In practice, uh, what then happens is income is often subdivided into different groups, uh, categorized into different classes if you prefer, and for instance, passive activity and trading activity. And often what happens is the tax man will sort of only allow losses to be applied against income of a similar class. And that gets complicated as to which losses can be used against which income or gains. And that will all be very specific to a given jurisdiction. But it's a point to note. Uh, as well, we need to think in terms of the possibility that tax losses uh, might not be able to be carried in those balances forever, that they might expire after some amount of years. Though as I've noted here, jurisdictions that essentially allow uh, for infinite life of tax losses uh, do exist. And finally, I just wanted to note that you can also have circumstances in your modeling where you can look to previous periods where you had gains and use your current period tax losses against those earlier years. And then in a sense, you do get money back because you're going to recognize an offset to previous year's income. But that is not the topic of this initial episode that we're looking at. We're only going to look at circumstances where we have an opportunity to carry losses forward. So with that, by way of a quick introduction, let's hop over to a typical, albeit simple, model and see what we can get done. So here we are in a simple financial model where we're looking at a cash flow payment cascade. It could be any cash flow, but the key thing is that we have the cash flow of tax payments with an inflow outflow convention where costs are negative, outflows from the business are negative. And if we look at the tax payment profile, we can see that we have this issue with effectively implying we're receiving money uh, at the front of the forecast, presumably from a government, from taxes, which as we noted in the introduction, uh, at the very least is a very odd situation. I can't honestly say I've seen jurisdictions that would allow such a thing. So the question then becomes, you know, what is a more common treatment of circumstances that presumably have negative taxable income. So let's go ahead and flip to our tax chapter uh, and take a look at the current logic and see what we can amend. Uh, the first thing we notice is, of course, that we are generating uh, negative taxable income. And the reason for that principally uh, is that we have a very accelerated tax depreciation or capital allowance profile, which is giving rise to these uh, front-end negatives here. And then the code simply just multiplies 30%, presumably the corporation tax rate, uh, by that negative number to then generate negative tax payments. And that's what we need to try to revisit and fix. So the element that we want to amend is effectively sitting here. We're no longer going to consider that the taxable income. Uh, th what this line calculation is here is effectively a combination of uh, taxable tax gains and losses, which is effectively how we might characterize that calculation. When it's positive, we go ahead and look at the profile of our taxable, uh, 
what was our taxable income, now a kind of line I'm calling tax gains and losses. We start with losses and then we start to accumulate positive income or gains. So the question now is when you have that sort of circumstances, the first thing that's often useful as a modeler is to go ahead and split that into its two constituent parts uh, by looking at the positives separately from the negatives. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just say taxable gains uh, and current period tax losses, which is the negative bit. So for taxable gains, just to pull out the positives, we'll do a max comma zero, sort of standard modeler's convention for extracting positives. And we can kind of show how that works once I do a refresh and take a look at it, uh, where we just basically have ripped out the positive elements of the profile that we looked at uh, a minute or so ago. And then for tax losses, of course, if we do minimum uh, of this target line, comma zero, we'll of course pull out uh, just the negatives. But as we often see in modeling, it's useful to stick with a positive as normal convention uh, when we're working up calculations and not to hold on to that negative and deal with it. But go ahead and revert it, flip it to a positive, which is kind of what we're advertising here, right? We're saying current period tax losses, so that when that number is positive, uh, we mean that it's a tax loss. And we could go ahead and chart that. And what we'll see is we've got this front end period where we're generating tax losses. So, so far so good. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff. Now the question is, what do we do with these current period tax losses? And as I indicated in the introduction, we're going to accumulate them in a balance. So that sounds like we should go get a balance corkscrew. Fortunately, this model has a template sheet that includes template components. And this will be a tax loss carry forward balance. So let's go ahead and modify our triple X. Let's see, tax loss. Uh, maybe I'll even use that abbreviation. That should get the job done. Okay, and that immediately gets us to a kind of a question mark is, do we start our forecast with uh, a position of tax losses? Uh, and we could. That's possible. And that would create some issues with deferred tax and various other things. So we just need to kind of query uh, people about that the same way as we typically would have a taxable basis starting position, meaning kind of what's depreciable for tax, what's left. Again, another item that isn't in the accounting balance sheet, but needs to come from the tax books. Uh, for now, I'm just going to leave that as zero uh, to kind of simplify matters a bit. Let's go ahead and uh, recognize that we're going to build up this balance by generating tax losses in a current period. So that's pretty straightforward. We can ask ourselves, how this balance is going to come down. Let's just sort of see how it accumulates right now. So that those tax losses basically built up a balance. What's going to cause it to come down is to use them. What is often called utilized tax losses. Okay, so if we use them, we are going to uh, reduce that balance if we figure out a way to use them. And the way we can use them is to apply them against future gains. So here's our positive taxable income, the positive gains that uh, would allow us to potentially use uh, the tax losses. And you can't use typically the tax loss carry forwards in excess of the positive taxable income that you have here. And of course I'm presuming in this initial setup that we have just simply one income class we aren't looking at different uh, categories of income. So we need to compare our taxable gains in the period. So that, if you will, is current period. So there's no confusion. Taxable gains. We need to look at that against the brought forward tax losses. And that is a classic uh, balance counterflow from an opening balance. And we can basically uh, take the larger of the two. So what we're going to utilize, uh, sorry, I say the larger of the two, the smaller of the two, what we're going to utilize is 
as much as we can, if that makes things a little bit more obvious. And by as much as we can, uh, if I just simply do the logic here, it will make more sense uh, when you see it kind of march this across. I'm deliberately just going to go a few periods out here, do a shift F9. So right now what's going on is we're using just what's a ta taxable gain, but at some point the total will exceed the brought forward balance. Okay, so right now by copying it through that, I'm taking out 44421 we have accumulated 98922, but if I keep copying that across, at some point, what's going to happen is that you're going to be trying to take more than you've got. So let's go ahead and hook this in. I'm just sort of doing a temporary sort of demonstration here. Let's go ahead and put the utilized tax losses into the corkscrew, at least as far as I've calculated them. I'm by no means done here. Okay, to see if we can kind of understand what might be going on. So here we are, uh, we're continuing to offset the gains, the positive taxable income in each period. And I kind of march myself across here, do a couple more periods, and at some point you start to see that you're reducing your brought forward tax losses to a point where you now take, in fact, what's just left in the balance. Okay, so how the way that minimum code is working on the counterflow is it will finally detect that you're starting to use up all that you've got and then from that point onwards uh, you won't get any. You've used them all up. Unless, of course, you generate future uh, tax losses in some subsequent period. If we chart the kind of profile of that balance, we can see kind of what's going on, right? We build up that tax loss balance, accumulate those tax losses and use them up. And for that entire stretch of time, we won't pay any income taxes. We don't get money back, but equally we don't uh, have to pay anything. And the way that's going to happen is that we need to take a look at our positive income Let's see, where did we have our gains? Let's go ahead and this is normally what we pay uh, taxes on, the positive bit, uh, but we get to offset with using tax losses as far as that goes, and that might get us something I'll call uh, you know, income subject to tax. Okay, so the actual income subject to tax now is to net that off and if we see how that works in that kind of last period where we've used up the balance uh, we can kind of see that we're going to have a little bit of income to pay so we come out here and that one uh, period here 30 ending six months ending 30 June 2022 is the period in which we start to get honest to God income subject to tax because we only able to use up that kind of last remaining 7413, leaving us still with 10504 out of the initial 17917, which of course derived itself all the way back here from that kind of initial uh, quick income calculation, if you like. So that then gives us the new uh, ingredient for calculating our actual tax payments this income subject to tax now will not be negative uh, in this setup and because it's not negative we're never going to generate so to speak negative tax payments and we can now look at uh, the positive form of that and see that basically we have this whole front of the forecast where we're not having to pay taxes and then we kick off with that first period and then after that it's fairly uh, well behaved if you will. So you can start to see that initial kickoff point. And that then of course flows into the financial statements back where we started this and if I do a full recalc of the model uh, we can see that we now have that tax payment line just being negatives in this sign convention. Okay, so do we still have a balance sheet that makes sense? And what are the implications for the deferred tax liability uh, in doing all that. It looks like 
uh, subject to potentially some rounding, things are reasonably well behaved with a buildup, uh, and we have a little bit of an issue uh, on rounding, but not much. We've got just some zeros, and presumably those are small. So I can't complain about things yet, although that's a very simple introduction uh, to the topic. It gets more complicated as we start to introduce further features, including kicking off our profile, our forecast, I should say, with a non-zero tax loss carry forward balance because that has some implications for what uh, and how we set up our deferred tax liability calculation. For now, we'll call that a useful introduction to the topic.